Welcome back to War Thunder and welcome to the tank review on the BMP-1, which is a Soviet rank 6 battle rating 7.3 light tank. Now let's have a very quick look into the tech tree and let's summarize some of the obvious things. Now it's next to the T-64A 1940s, 1971, sorry, um, and it's a consecutive research after the Object Nano 6. It features a lot of similarities with the Object Nano 6, such as, for example, being quite fast, quite nimble, yet uh, large. Uh, from the tank's perspective for a light tank and also amphibious but a lot of the things that make the object nano 6 the object nano 6 i miss on the bmp1 on the other hand it's unique in itself now the battle rating of 7.3 also lets it fight together with a lot of the soviet uh, early tier 5 vehicles, IS-3, T-54, 1947 and uh, two of the tank destroyers against tier 4s on a regular basis. Again, I have to say it is also a benefit and also a, well, not so good thing for this tank. But without further ado, before I get too much into the details, I will give you now a full rundown on the statistics, let you know that there, uh, let you know everything important that there is to know about the vehicles. The rather unique playstyle that to a certain degree reminds me on the Super Hellcat, but in a different way or shape or form. And also, yeah, some ace can play in the background later on. Um, so let's begin with the armor. And we can see 19 millimeter on the big um, lower frontal plate. It is okayish against um, low penetration triple A. The upper part, well, it's 50 caliber safe, uh, like the turret, and that's about it. You can get hull broken by solid shots from sometimes the 20 pounder, but the real threshold seems to be 90 millimeter. Usually it seems like the threshold is 85 mm, but that just applies to um, tanks that can get shot by a Soviet vehicle. So it might be something for arcade. Um, it doesn't have a lot of armor and yet it's uh, big and even when it gets splashed by heat, hash or RT strikes, there is a risk that this external rocket here, it's an ATGM, can also be blown up because now it counts as an external AMORAC. Speaking of MREX, we have quite a prominent turret MREX and uh, it feels like an autoloader uh, when I look at the stats, 6 seconds reload for this 73mm 2A28 gun. Um, we can see that we have, well, not just this half circle of ammo, of ammunition, but also those three additional rounds which are uh, ATGMs. You cannot even remove them except if you fire them off uh, in the beginning of the battle. You can also um, refill them in a um, cap circle and it doesn't make sense to take out any of the ammunition to which I will come later. You have three crew members, the driver, the commander and also the gunner. So the gunner is actually the only one in the turret. Then we have the engine and transmission in the front and that's about it with this vehicle. And there is a gigantic fuel tank here in the back of the vehicle and the free space here should be um, for the rest of the crew I guess. So if we take then off the armor view we can see that there are some hatches. So that's it for this vehicle with armor which is not impressive and also the interior which is even less impressive. The one thing that a light tank really relies on next to its stealthiness is overall its, well, mobility. Let's talk about that for a moment. 300 horsepower is as much as the Object Nano 6, so the predecessor, but overall it's kind of average. But you are on the lighter end, you're indeed a full light tank, 13.0 tons. Horsepower to ton ratio is in this comparison the best, 23.1. In particular, the Jagdpanzer 5 here um, has here um, 3.5 less, and that is significant because that also means that the RA251 is slower than the BMP1 in uh, drag race, so to speak. And um, the top speed is also the third highest after the Jagdpanzer 5 and also the Object Nano 6. 
However, thanks to your good horsepower to ton ratio, you're on average faster so on uh, everything but hard terrain, you're faster than the other two vehicles. The reverse speed is also not too bad um, with minus 11, it allows you to do certain actions, however, it would be preferable to see a reverse speed of 20-25 km an hour. So in this respect, of course, the Jagdpanzer 5 and the RA251 take the cake here. Also, you have no neutral steering, but that's typical Russian, isn't it? Next to spotting enemy targets and also capturing capture zones, you need to kill your enemies to get RP and silver lines. So you need adequate firepower. In this comparison, we have by far the smallest caliber with just 73 millimeters with this 2A28 gun. You have 40 shells, that's okay-ish, I'd say, and a reload of 6.0 seconds, much like the Object Nano 6 with a bigger caliber. However, you have an autoloader, so it doesn't matter what the status of your crew is, you always have 6 seconds. So that means that you even can, um, on a realistic basis, beat the Jagdpanzer 5 with your reload despite him having, on an ace crew, 5.6 seconds, again for a bigger gun. Then also let's talk about the turret rotation speed and well 20 degrees is kind of average. I would love to see a better one for brawling situations at which this tank is not that great in uh, all honesty due to how the gun overall performs. Mm, uh, I will talk about this later. And yes that's a mistake with the minus 8 degrees on the Jagdpanzer 5 of turret rotation speed. The gun depression with minus 5 degrees is also not the very best, but overall it doesn't really feel all that bad in this vehicle and 30 degrees of gun elevation is also quite nice. The elevation speed however is the second highest with 6.0 seconds and remember you don't have a stabilizer unlike on the Object 906, so that is also very relative. And um, I have to say, this vehicle does the job, but sometimes you really miss the gun performance of the Object 906. Now let's talk about the ammunition and the OG9 High Explosive Fragmentation Grenade is the first stock shell. And it's not very impressive, in fact it's very underwhelming, with just 290 meters of muscle velocity. That is subsonic. That is really, really slow. I have not found any kind of use for this shell. Second stock shell is the PG-9 heat anti-tank grenade. The muscle velocity is more than double with 665 meters per second and your penetration is 300 millimeters. So practically the heat shell is penetration wise as much as the, on the object nano 6. And for the gun, that's it. That means you have no hash, a typical Russian, and also no APAG. And that is really a break in the line, I'd say. And uh, I miss it very often. Very often I have side shots on soft targets where I would safely one-shot them with APAG. But then the HE sometimes is a bit unreliable, uh, the heat is a bit unreliable because also 665 is not very fast in terms of muscle velocity and you really have to train the long range engagements. However, I, um, I want to show you later on a few clips how this is actually useful, the low muscle velocity. And uh, then let's come to the third ammunition type, which is the rocket. The ATGM that this tank uses is mounted on top of the gun barrel, so you can actually fire them simultaneously. But you have to keep in mind a few things, because it can get dangerous for you to actually aim, uh, to, to use this ATGM. Hear me out. First of all, you have 120 meters per second muscle velocity. That is very, very slow, or it's maximum speed on the trajectory. You have a 3 kilometer range, which is kind of average for an ATGM, but you have hand aiming and you have 400 millimeters of heat penetration. So that means at battle rating 7.3, you have four ATGM um, warheads at your disposal. 
and you can fire them simultaneously, but they are hand aimed, so they are first generation ATGM. If you miss your target, which can happen from time to time, especially at close combat, because how the shell is mounted on top of the vehicle, um, and you do not derp then for safety reasons to shed into the ground, your vehicle stops because the WASD keys are also the ones that guide the anti-tank missile. Keep that in mind. Not that you suddenly stop in front of your enemy and you don't know what's happening. Then 120 meters per second at 3 kilometers range. That means the following. If you do the math correctly, that means the rocket needs 25 seconds up until it reaches its target at maximum range. 25 seconds. That's enough time for the target to brush its teeth, get into some evening dress and put lipstick on before the 400mm penetrating ATGM arrives. That is a long time, even at yeah close quarters that uh, leads to a lot of misses because you overlead or underlead your target very often. I'm serious, this is a threat because if you then um, guide your rocket into the air, you need those 25 seconds to stand still up until you lose contact to your rocket and uh, you cannot interrupt it except firing another ATGM. I think I, I have not uh, looked at how long it takes to reload but it's relatively quick and here we can see it in the shell stat comparison that the tank lacks APHE the AHE is pitiful and extremely useless uh, also the muscle velocity is just laughable and even in the um, heat FS section of the actual gun warhead we have the second lowest muscle velocity Furthermore, we have no smoke to hide ourselves, but that is kind of common for all the light tanks or the very nimble vehicles except the Type 61. In the following scenes that I've prepared for you, I want to show you how to use the double strike characteristics to your advantage and to also work around one of the weaknesses, namely having no solid shot to shoot through those concrete walls. So we have here an FV4005, his only sh uh, shell type is Hash, and he can't shoot through the concrete wall either, but I can. But then I have to reload, except I don't have to reload because I can follow it up with an ATGM directly into his ammo rack. In the next scene I want to show you why I don't use the rocket. Mm, so here is an M46 and I hit him and I disable his ability to shoot back. And that gave me also enough time to reload the normal gun with an anti-tank grenade so I didn't have to use my precious rocket, of which I just had two left. In the next scene we can see that I also used the double strike cap capability for two reasons. First of all, to not get spotted so I don't give the enemy the time to even shoot with, with the machine gun. And also to secure the kill before an allied could secure it and uh, I just would receive an assist. That sounds a little bit selfish, but it's just a situation that you could apply to other similar situations. So here I drive on and I see that B got or gets captured and I don't know what's in there and uh, pay close attention how I aim. First of all, boom, his can Gun, cannon breach and his gunner are down and then I saw an ally behind me and I finished him off with the rocket. Now I want to just show you that in slow motion. So here again in slow motion I aim for the gun breach which is a very important thing to do when you work with just heat FS against something like a King Tiger or a T29 and you have an awkward angle. I could reload in time but somebody is coming from behind and I actually aim down on the lower plate for the rocket to adjust itself to hit the upper plate. That was intentional and then you could see already the machine guns incoming. With this scene I wanted to show you how to actually use the slow muscle velocity because now I am detected and I just tracked the Stritzwagen 81 and I uh, know where he is, I retreat into the cover of the ridge line, so I can't get shot by the relatively high muscle velocity guns and I kill him 
with uh, being safe. I'm practically in cover and shoot over the ridge line. I locked the anti-tank grenades over the ridge line while sti still being uh, kind of visible or having a clear uh, line of shot, so to speak, but no clear line of sight. And that's the difference. That is something that you could use in certain situations. So, and here we are on the Emperor's Garden map, and I actually quite like this map. So, what I want to do here is to ambush the enemy, rather go for the cap circle. So, let's summarize the BMP-1 so far. We have a, well, not so small light tank, which is more or less a battle taxi, with a rather unique gun and gun caliber, a double strike, well, feature so to speak or capability and well it has no stabilizer as a rank 6 vehicle the ATGM of which you just have four rockets is uh, hand guided so you're a bit like a Stritzwagen 81 in this respect um, but you have less pen like just half of the pen and that's a tier 4 premium tank um, so you kind of see where this is going. Also, you just have practically one usable ammunition type for the gun. Long range is not something that you should prioritize. Um, and I really don't think that this tank would do very well in an open field. Um, it is still nimble and fast, but it's not that small that it can reliably avoid enemy fire and it uh, also suffers from hull break uh, unlike the object nano 6. What I was really waiting for is somebody to come around here to show himself and me shooting him in the flank. What I did not expect is that the enemy made something very surprising. They didn't appear at all at least on this flank. So that's the reason why I, well, I, I want to give the enemy a few moments to actually appear. You see, this tank is still very mobile and if you're not cautious enough, you will run right into the enemy. So that's an annoying feature because this tank is already dead, but there is no way for me to tell it. I move on and then, um, yeah, luck happens and uh, I see nothing, I see nothing and suddenly a King Tiger comes around, or Königstiger, with the Porsche turret. I aim for the gun breach again, and I actually damage it, but I don't quite uh, kill it, and that was a poor miss with the ATGM. Again, the ATGM disappears in the gun mantle, and he actually seemed to have hit me, but um, it did not really a lot of damage. Then I hit his ammunition, it doesn't, doesn't blow up, and I want to disable the... Um, Gun breach again. Sadly, I didn't kill the gunner. Um, bit poor aim here, but the next shot actually finishes him. In. So that were quite some rounds for me to finish this guy. Bit of uh, unnecessary waste here, but we have to move on. And now, um, I'm not quite sure where to go. Are there still enemies advancing? Is still somebody coming from the enemy? Uh, approach direction so to speak and uh, I just ran into him that would be quite unfortunate and now watch this I'm going up on this ridge line thanks to my uh, very good mobility C2 tanks and I'll go for the disabling shot on the Stritzwagen 81 and I also go for the disabling shot on the T34 then I finish off the Stritzwagen 81 by a kill crew or a crew knockout and I have all the time in the world for uh, finishing off the T-34 again with a rocket and that was a quick double strike and it was safe they could not shoot back in time that's the that's the double punch feature of this tank um, yes this is uh, something that you cannot use too often I agree but at least you have it for the critical situations and then here we can see one of the drawbacks. I can't shoot through the concrete walls on this M41 Walker Bulldog or uh, some other American tank. He smoked himself up and I don't want to waste my shots. So this is why I wait patiently. I look behind me. There is a T-54 that, uh, that is securing my back 
and I just wait what's going on here. Sometimes you must not rush in, you must not uh, go in close quarters if the rest of your team have it under control. I saw a shot going a bit wide and I move on. And then there is another ridge line. I go over it and hello. This King Tiger, well, he died with the first shot. He already has had taken battle damage. And there is another tank. That's an RE251. And I blow him up with the first shot, hitting the ammo rack. And now that's my ace. That's my ace. And it didn't look all that complicated. You really have to train this uh, synergy of ATGM and quick reloading gun. But you also have to adapt to how they actually work. Now with the ATGM I use it more or less as a shotgun from like 150 meters onwards or even below that. Um, there are two possibilities as I showed before so I can now talk you through it. First of all you can be so close to the enemy for example to a Königstiger that the rocket possibly can't miss because you're so relatively low to the ground while the Königstig is a very tall uh, tank so at least you can hit the turret ring or also disable the gun breach and then you can finish him off again with the normal uh, shots of the gun. Now also I have to say you can refill the ATGMs parallel to the normal um, yeah, heat grenades. That is also something very nice. The mobility also allows this tank to capture multiple capture zones if needed. And uh, you can also spot the enemy through uh, bushes and uh, yeah, just mark it for your team. Be prepared to get many more assists than with the Object 906. Again, the Object 906 is very simple with a stabilizer and a very good penetrating heat uh, AT, APHE shell, sorry about this, at, well, any given range. So the BMP-1 feels very often like a downgrade, but it has very unique characteristics. To adapt to those is not that easy, not everybody wants to go for it, and to be honest, that you are tier 6 has, in my opinion, no benefit. You still face, uh, on an overwhelming basis, tier 4s. You very often get down tiers. And, well, the only thing that uh, the tier 6 is good for is making the grind longer and more expensive, which I don't approve. And that was practically the match. Uh, and so now I'm sitting around and doing nothing and I will no longer engage any enemies. So that's why I make here a cut. Now let's have a quick look at the post battle results. And well, for our five kills, one assist and one base capture, we got 32,000 silver lines and 3,728 research points, as well as a survivor award. Now about this 32,000 civil lines for a tier 6, that doesn't sound really much, but please remember, the ammunition is for free, that's pure profit, uh, also the ATGM is for free, and the maximum repair cost for this tank is just over 3,000 civil lines. It's dirty cheap to run, and it gives you the opportunity to avoid uh, losing, uh, losing money in a match, um, so you can always throw this tank in for really no cost. That's the final message for this tank review. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a like if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more. And we'll see each other in the skies and on the battlefields of War Thunder.